role responsibility and competency of people manager this is what we will be discussing in today's presentation so a basic agenda of what the coverage of today's presentation would be the background the origin of competency management we will also try to define what do we exactly understand by competency management distinguish competency based human resource management policies and the traditional human resource management policy as a case might be example there of benefits and weaknesses advantages and disadvantages of competency management major prerequisites for successful implementation and the lesson that we learn as in the conclusion part of it is what we will be discussing today so here in what comes around it the use of competency management the competency management henceforth will be written or depicted in the slide as cm please uh, read understand that cm denotes competency management basically originated way back in 1980s approximately 42 years from today in the private sector of the western world and the leading economies at those point of time were united states and united kingdom now motivation is was to identify the behavioral traits which distinguishes high performance from the average performances they were looking into the introduction of the public sector the government run systems the mostly position system since early 90s competency management has been first applied to improve managerial competencies and thereafter to the workers competency which have been extended as of today in fact nowadays it is believed that every one every individual is a manager in themselves in most countries it was introduced as a part of a broader reform and change process the context of the competency management why it has been used how and where it has been utilized let's say the budgetary context and the lesser resources were first identified as such when we wanted to utilize or optimum utilizations of the current or probably the future human resources of the future employees that comes around it competencies management eventually became a more strategic hr tools it was mostly integrated into the human resource management as far as the competencies the tools the abilities the skills the knowledge that each employee needs to possess before being absorbed in an organization and that is what we are looking at it so competency management is basically looking for employees with a brighter future wherein the organization can plan ahead with the prerequisite skills knowledge that and the technical abilities that the prospective employee possess so it is basically improvement of individual employability hr tool for continuous staff development mobility flexibility and yes more objectivity as the case might be so definitions and meaning competencies is ksa as i have been telling it to you ksa is knowledge skills and attitude probably behavior which have predictive value of effective performance of a function or a specific role now remember if you have the right attitude the right behavior you can pick up the tricks of the trade you can enhance your skills you can relearn and learn and probably upgrade yourself as far as knowledge is concerned and that is what we are looking into it it is knowledge skills and behavior which have predictive values of an effective performances competencies management is a set of activities aimed at realizing the mission of the organization and optimizing the performance of an employee a competency model provides a structured overview of all competency that employees of an organization is requiring and that is what we are looking to build upon it this is true so what are competencies first it is easy to be identified developed and usually have a satisfactory thing like if you have can understand it's an is an iceberg that i've tried to tell it to you some of these competencies are basically visible it's a qualification that you have it's the experience that you have the skills that you have and you look at the ship that been been flowing around it but mostly remember mostly all your competencies are always deep dug and are difficult to ascertain with your naked eyes or perceive thereby what are these the most common thing would be behavior is it's an outlook towards your life the way you conduct yourself yes 
our behaviors are our basic attributes of the values or the motives that we have been invited with, the attributes that we actually espoused, and the traits of the characters that we display overall. Uh, remember, be it value, attribute, traits, or motive, inclusive of everything is competencies. Yes, knowledge, skills, and abilities or behaviors are what much, maybe much more easily distinguishable than the other things. So, meaning and approaches. Say, <clears throat> The U.S. approach, uh, let me let me give it uh, clarified to you in front of it, is basically focusing on searching of an exceptional individual with huge potential and huge qualification, huge knowledge, huge skills, exceptionally, phenomenally well, and that is what the United States approach would be all about. It so search for an individual behavior traits which characterize excellent performances, right? What are, what helps with the UK approach? is focus on the occupational confidence that is where you need to understand the areas that the person has been exposed upon he or she is adequately experienced has been then done there been their kind of scenario knows the things inside out so competency identify all the skills needed to perform a job is what we are asserting <clears throat> the france approach is focus on the concept of affinity as as in cases it's basically a competency that positions himself for the job as when he has been acute or attuned himself or herself for the perspective absolutely precise knowledge that comes around it and that is what the french approach is what would be looking into it it often known as a meteor uh, Matthew, remember, is a sum of recognized com competencies, be it savoir, savoir faire, or savoir être, which enables a professional to position himself in a job in the light of his experience and expertise. Whereas the German approach is Fakompetenze, uh, it's a focus on professional expertise, as in what we have been talking about it. Absolutely polished to the brim and tuned to the professional and hotelier would be completely with a different mindset. A soldier would be, soldier would be a completely with a different mindset. So will be a marketing agent altogether. And that is what we are looking forward to it. So what is new with the competency management and why do we need it? Knowledge alone is definitely not, in, not enough any longer. We require competencies that to be tested with reference in a real life situation know-how and experience rather than the diploma level and seniority that exists about it remember it is your experience it is your exposures it is your knowledge it is your willingness to learn things and um, take it forward that counts knowledge alone doesn't play anything it's about the capacity to solve a problem and that is what a change of thinking in hrm is all about it we need to understand that fine nuances between the traditional HRM and the competency-based HRM. Remember in competency-based HRM, it was all about recruitment on the basis of demonstrated competency. How does a person function? So and selection criteria focus into experiences, behavioral skills and values, where in traditional HRM, it is the recruitment on the basis of specific diplomas as in qualification and how is the person selection criteria focuses on knowledge personality and attitude we'll talk about the job description job descriptions targeted hierarchical level they are the one who is targeted at the job content and the competencies required to do well in the job now we'll talk about the traditional hrm of development and training it's the development of knowledge with the aim for promotions appraisal is always on focusing on the job functioning of the job as far as traditional HR is concerned. Whereas on competency-based HRM, it would be job description targeted on the job content and not at the level of the organization. So the competency is required to do well on the job. Development and training is to aim to better one performance in that particular job. It is the aim to utilize or enhance the human potential as the case might be. Remember, in the traditional methodology, it was only promotion that we were looking into it. Appraisal out here is all about performance, all about learning, all about improvement, and all about result. Unlike in the traditional knowledge, it was all about the job 
that we were looking into it example of competencies framework for this, uh, for anybody out there is to analyze the problem solving skills that is what we are looking forward towards it delivering quality quality results learning development prioritizing organizing resilience working with others is what what counts it's the leadership abilities for the firm as a person might be looking into it that is what is most important in today's world so let us understand as in the competency framework i have highlighted communication communication plays a pivotal role remember in terms of delivering quality in terms of delivering result in terms of learning and development you name it and we have it the resilience thereby is work to be looked into it communication wise that is the reason why i have been highlighting it time and again is the ability to communicate in the meeting make your point viably noticed by everybody present in the meeting has the ability to understand has the ability to make yourself understood in front of the audiences capacity to communicate technical knowledge and a lucid language so that everybody understand as what are the pitfalls or what are the advantages of utilizing a particular technical uh, or technologies as such so what i'm trying to tell it is the way you relate to an audience you present to an audience uh, so that the audience has a full grasp of uh, things this is what we call as the drafting skills the negotiation skills ability to chair meetings the didactic skills didactic skills is where you can balance your point of view vis a vis the other thing assertiveness and definitely feeling at ease in the public as the case might be now different dimensions of competency framework there is something called personal competencies definitely you just cannot negate the personal competencies it is all about self management assertiveness motivation and inspiration ethical attitude as we can call around it whereas it comes up the technical competencies as knowledge technical expertise methodological approach experiences thereby we are talking not only personal not only technical but also how you relate to the community or the society at large this is your social competence in terms of your team spirit in terms of your communication conflict mediation and cooperation implementation competencies are result orientation orientation goal driven absolutely on the basis of the environmental awareness strategic tactical thinking and the risk attainment or the risk readiness that comes around it and this is what is meant by the implementation competencies thereby competency framework for the senior position in the in the organization senior position would be taking the mantle shape of leadership position at all point they should be not only looking into the leadership position but maybe giving the strategic visions to the organization achieving the role the result with faster than ever you must have thought around it and that is for the senior position works around it yes they should be affluent with communication managing relations people human resource management everything everything of of general management and the hr as the case might be so now what are the future competencies that we will look forward to the future competencies are of all if innovations creativity we are looking to think out of box solutions coming with product which will be lapped up by the general public flexibility in in manufacturing flexibility in terms of giving reaction and probably tuning it to the customization or the demand of the customer work collaboration account across the boundaries that comes around it yes you should be willing to work around across the boundaries if i see across the boundary can be across the timelines time zones change management relationship building vision and future orientation is what we look at it so use of competency management during the human resource process is all about recruitment and selection training and development performance evaluation determining the level of variable rewards as the case might be identification of the potential for the quick progressing career and so on and so forth as the case might be looking around it remember this is what we are demanding this is the use of competency management and this has been plotted out here being one on a recruitment selection 
what has been done with training and development performance evaluation is all about competency the highest echelon which take, takes care of it probably that is the reason why we take it out every now and then determining the levels of variable rewards and so on and so forth that comes around it so professional groups involved in competency based management programs how do you go around it this is what we are looking forward to every now and then as the case might be in terms of managers on terms of senior technical staff on administrative one laborers probably they are the most least one because essentially they are supposed to be good at at least one skill for which they have been employed for whereas the managers should be good at multiple number of skills and that is where the competencies has to be built upon it every now and then and this is why we call competent competency based management for the senior people administrative people the benefits are many the benefits are plentiful if you look into it and if we plot a graph onto it i will be giving it to the highest numbers as such what is happening with this remember providing additional in instrument for collaborators is what competency based management will tell it to you what are you good at what are your collaborators good at so can you fix the issue with the help usage of each other's cooperation sharing of the common language of the people management is another one of the corporate uh, competency based management is all about it more transparency criteria to make selection performance evaluation or training programs and development on a easier fashion which scores the highest at par with even more appropriate criteria to make selection performance evaluation training and development decision almost neck to neck that has been co covered around it and most importantly we have a common reference table to manage those collaborators which scores the next best kind of highest thing now let us talk about the benefits of competency management in perspective remember this is we are talking about um, uh, about oecd nations as such the, it's a fair people management schemes everybody is looked fairly and squarely there are no biases and nobody has been neglected or overlooked greater encouragement for personal development is what we look into it better understanding of what is necessary to achieve a high performance at work better understanding of the organization mission and the role played in the organization from time to time as on when on issue as the things comes around it general positive experiences with competency management common language consistency across the public service continuity in monitoring the careers of the public servant creations of the cultures of continuous self development assistance for the management of change as the case might be remember we are looking at future oriented perspective on personal management improvement competency competitiveness of the government as the case might be this is what we are looking at it it's the general positive experiences we have with competencies building and competencies management the common language the creativity the cultures that we goes around it it helps us in in organizing the change management it is always future oriented and improves competitiveness within the organization now it cannot be all positive for competency management there might be some loopholes some things that might not click as as expected so that is what the overall weakness is all about it horizontal integration of competencies is never equal to be complete remember this is what we are trying to do so if if i if i work on the same levels if i work on the same level i am not enhancing my uh, competencies we are not that's not a complete thing right i have to do it vertically and not horizontally competencies framework is not equal to the needs driven that needs to be understood in sufficient definitions of core organizational competencies at time yes the uh, organization itself would have a number of host of competencies and you might avail one few of them or you might be good at few of them not all of them so strategic dimensions of competency management is missing ad hoc definitions of competencies thus creeps in risk 
risk of increasing bureaucracy yes it will become user friendliness insufficient involvement of stakeholders and lack of commitment thereby limited implementations at the decentralization level as the case might be so major prerequisites of a successful implementation and how do you go about it existence of the comprehensive mission vision strategy goals and objective supportive and committed middle management or the top management you should be looking to it yes if you cannot expect that uh, thing happening for yourself how do you expect uh, to move on to build on competency it's a culture that needs to be established establishment of a particular professionalism professional department professional ethos you should be ready to invest in the development of the public employees promotion of the culture stimulating learning and improvement of the healthy competitiveness that needs for an adaptive change as the case might be this is what is of utmost required requirement as of this point of time for the prerequisite for the successful implementation of competency based management major prerequisite for successful implementation will also mean that we should not dive in with the whole lot of change all together by itself we should take small small baby steps and have a pilot project before the general introductions of all ministerial departments and agencies this is what is required involvement of the know how of all stakeholders is a must have bring in confidence build in confidence build in cooperation go for collaboration have an open a open door policy to discuss what are the changes that you need to go around it until and unless you have earned the trust of the stakeholders you will not be able to successfully implement your competency based management so development of shared understanding is what is the must think kind of uh, scenario and that is what we are looking for it the determinations of competencies verification level is very very important as such so let us tell and identify what are the lessons that we have learned around it of competency management competency management would always tell about a long term and a definitively continuous process that comes around it you just cannot say that this will be a short term one off process it is a political and administrative commitment commitment remember is a key key of commitment from the top management the senior level has to be there successful implementation depends upon the participation of every stakeholders that is been there a purely top down approach leads to demotivation so it has to be all round approach everywhere it can be a bottom up it can be initiated at the top it has to be a um, it has it has to be implemented at the truest of the spirit let us understand a professional communication and training strategy is crucial why because this means that you are giving an opportunity to all the employees to upgrade themselves build on their competencies without any resistance without any fear and it is going to help them if not in this organization perhaps later on in their career progress of an effective implementation is best illustrated by the change in staff attitude and that is what we are looking as for the behaviors are concerned as the case might be as the base base might be progress of an effective implementation is what we look into it a good viable options for the change wherein people are opening up people are embracing change people are not afraid to take on more responsibilities and enhance their competencies as on when on basis with this we have to understand the competency philosophy it is just not a mindset it is not just not an hr to it is just not an administrative culture it is part of sustaining yourself and sustaining and having an edge over the competitors all the time so the challenge is to instill the competency philosophy in all of us in everybody's mindset it's a transformation it's a open leadership style that can facilitate such a growth and such a mindset
in conclusion what will i say it's the best practice there is no nothing called a best practice a practice which might click in one organization might be an utter failure in the other so you need to tune yourself as per the competency based management is concerned as per the requirement of the organization the management the development of the staff competency should be aligned to the organizational strategies the promotion of an integrated hrm system is such key to the successful hrm or competency based management remember design is only 20% and implementation is where the heart is all about for the for the successful culmination of competency management culture is the major obstacle in fact the change in culture is often the key around it and once installed that culture becomes the success is the keystone of the success for futures all endeavors of the organization with this few words, I would love to wind up this particular session. Thank you for watching this video.